Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitertair, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who was actually referred to me by a colleague. And the reason for the referral is that this patient suffers from quite severe and debilitating tinnitus. And as a result, they're contraindicated to undergo ear irrigation. But also, um, if you perform microsuction, it can sometimes pose a risk um, in terms of exacerbating the patient's tinnitus. And therefore, uh, if possible, the ideal uh, method of removing this earwax is via mechanical instruments. So, um, corrects, which we're using now, ear hooks or forceps. And um, so the specialist, my colleague, who this patient originally saw, um, mainly performs microsuction. So um, they recommended that they come and visit me to see if I could help. It was quite a challenging case, um, more so because the patient's ear canal was quite narrow and some of the wax was quite deep. Not It wasn't up towards the eardrum, thankfully. If it was, it'd be really, really difficult to remove this um, without performing microsuction. And also the consistency is quite, it wasn't wet, but I would say it's quite loose and soft. Um, if this was a bit firmer, you could get um, the jobs and horn in or, or even the forceps and trying to pull it out in one singular lump. But here we're having to remove it in little sections and parts because it's so loose. Um, now I'm alternating between uh, the plastic carbon fiber, um, uh, nylon filled carbon fiber, should I say, um, uh, jobs and horn and also the metal one. And the reason for that is in this variety, some of this um, wax was a bit deeper and the, the metal stainless steels, the surgical stainless steel one is a bit longer. So I've got better reach. Um, so I felt a bit more comfortable using that to remove some of the more deeper wax. However, the, the metal version, of course, it's got uh, a greater uh, strength. Uh, and uh, if it does come in contact with the bony part of the ear canal, it can be a bit more uncomfortable. So you just have to weigh out the pros and cons, the benefits uh, of the disadvantages of which one to use and when to use it. So if anyone is new to my channel, um, I'll just give you a quick overview of the ear anatomy and physiology. So our ear canal is approximately 2.6 centimetres in length and it's best to divide the ear canal in thirds. So the outer third is made up of cartilage. Um, so cartilage is it's semi-rigid, it's uh, malleable, and sitting on the cartilage portion of the ear canal is a thick layer of skin. It's about a millimeter in thickness. Um, the inner two thirds of the ear canal, uh, however, is made up of bone. So bone is a lot more sensitive and uh, it's rigid, it's not flexible. And in addition, the skin that lines the bony part of the ear canal is far, far thinner. It's uh, less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness. So. 10 times thinner and that sits directly on the bone making the bony part of the ear canal the inner two thirds extremely sensitive so whereas we could apply some pressure on the cartilage portion just as i'm doing here we wouldn't be able to do that on the bony part of the ear it would be very uncomfortable um so we've, we've made good headway here um so the patient could instantly uh, hear better at this point because as you can see, the eardrum's fully visible and sound waves can travel through. But we're just trying to see if we can get as much out as possible, but without risking any trauma. So again, I've gone towards the, the metal jobs and horns so, or ear caret. It's got different names, um, an ear scoop, caret, uh, jobs and horn. Now, interestingly, I'm developing my own version. Um, I'm really excited by it, actually. It's, we've spent a lot of time designing it. And it's got quite a few unique features, the jobs and horn. Um, I won't say too much at the moment. Um, it should be ready in the next couple of months. So we're in the production process. And I think it would really would have really helped in this case, um, particularly in the left ear. So do stay tuned in the, for the left ear. So what I've done there, I've just brought some of this deeper wax forwards. And then I reverted back to the plastic one. The plastic one, um, if you do make contact with the burning part of the ear canal, again, it, it, I'm not saying it's not going to be uncomfortable for the patient, but it would probably be more tolerable than the metal one. So I'm using them 
in conjunction with one another. And this is now on the cartilage portion, you can see all those hairs. So these hairs should only be found on the outer third of the ear canal. I can start to apply a bit of pressure to really kind of scoop it out. So this is just past the first bend before the second bend. So we're just about uh, less than a centimeter into the ear. And this patient's got a little trench so you can see I've gone in and out and scooped a nice piece out. I wasn't able to take a, a still image at the end of all the wax. It was just a really busy clinic, so my, my next clinic, patient was waiting. And so these procedures take a bit longer. Um, with suction, it would have been a lot quicker. Um, but of course, uh, we wanted to avoid that. Uh, the patient specifically obviously came to for me to try and avoid using that. Fortunately, we were. So again, just use the metal just want to bring some of this deeper wax forward and once it's more in the safe zone the cartilage zone i've just reverted back to uh, carbon filled nylon with this as well um it's a bit broader the, the plastic one uh, which gives more coverage so i'm able to remove more wax in a singular scoop with the plastic as opposed to the metal see this patient's got quite a few hairs just at the entrance and I think there's just one bit well, we could have left that if I'm honest uh, but I thought that's the patient's so still so we did actually re manage to remove that um, piece of wax on the posterior back part of the ear wall but I'm just mopping up the entrance first and the eardrum you can see it's intact slightly retracted uh, the eardrum looks a bit buckled inwards um, superiorly so they may have a bit of gestation. In fact, they did have a bit of gestation due dysfunction. If memory serves me correct. So again, I just used the metal one to bring that forwards. It's more on the safe zone now. It's probably still on the border of the bony part of cartilage, but because it's closer, um, I was able to reach it with the, the plastic version and scoop it out. So yeah, we're not going to go for anything more because that would be involved scraping the canal wall and a bit of wax is good for us. If I do go for any more, it's more laterally near the entrance, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Um, now, this is the patient's left ear. There's a little gap in the middle. The left side, I found the wax to be a bit drier. Um, it wasn't dry enough, however, to use forceps. The forceps to just cut through it or an ear hook because it'll just dissect. So I still had to continue with the jobs and horn. Um, and the wax is a bit more embedded up against the back part of the ear canal in particular and the, the, the base of the ear canal. It's not as loose, it's a bit more sticky. Now when the patient attended, I actually performed the left ear first, but I showed you the right ones, I just felt it was probably a bit more exciting than this side. So I'm trying to get underneath this side and bring it through. Now the view can... Um, change somewhat between the right and left ears and the reason for that is if if you're right-handed like, like, like i am i'm holding the instrument in my dominant right hand and the eye clear scopes if anyone who doesn't know how the procedure is performed and what it looks like externally um i uploaded a video a couple of days ago uh, where i performed the procedure live on tv and it's the reason why i'm making reference to that because it's great you can actually see the way i'm holding how it's all held and the, the technique so it give you a bit more of a perspective and how the procedures perform. So with the right side, um, because of the, I'm using my right hand to go into the ear and the angles, um, I'm using the endoscope to gain access into the ear. I'm stretching the, I'm putting the endoscope inside the ear and just past the entrance, once I'm there with the endoscope, I'm pushing it to the left to almost open the ear canal because our ear canals are not straight. They're bendy and twisty. Um, and because the endoscope has to go into the ear to stretch the ear canal, um, it means that initially any wax that's close to the entrance is quite zoomed in because that's purely because we have to put the endoscope in there to, to stretch the ear. With the left side, it's sometimes a bit different. We can actually position the endoscope out of the ear uh, when it's got more lateral wax and use the instrument to stretch the ear open to gain access. So... Um, when I first started performing endoscopic earwax removal, I used to prefer the right ear because the left ear, the technique, especially if the wax is deeper in the ear, because your hands can quite easily cross over um, in the left side. Um, 
and it used to probably for me a bit as well when I first started until I developed a, a technique where I can stretch the left ear using the endoscope and then going with the with the instrument. But I used to always prefer the the right ear. Uh, but now it's the complete opposite. I always prefer the left ear. And it's a bit a bit odd why. Um, so yeah, I think most right-handed people who perform endoscopic ear waxing do prefer the right ear from from our training courses, but um, I'm kind of going the other way now. So majority of the ear canal is clear. Now I didn't have to use the metal one here because I was just about able to reach, but again it's really sticky, and I'm just going to be careful because we are on the bony part. Now, some of you may wonder why the Jobson horn has got a hole in the middle wax hollow. And you can see probably why here at the moment. And you'll get a better idea near the end of the video. Without that hollow section in the middle, what will happen with soft wax is as you're scooping it out, you're going to spread it like butter against the canal wall. So you're not really going to remove it. So when you've got a hollow center, soft wax, as you're kind of scooping the wax away off the canal wall, the soft wax goes travels up the hollow section and you get look almost like a little spiral effect at the top just like that you can see without that hollow section it's almost like a it's almost like a potato peeler in a way you get the skin of the potato going through that hollow part of the blade and if we didn't have that it would just spread it against the the canal wall making it more difficult to remove so again i can just about reach this with the with the plastic version just about but as I'm kind of gently scooping it it's it is really impacted against the canal wall this side it's a lot more stubborn in comparison to the left side where you're gliding it and the loose wax is coming away easily but again already at this point we've got a really good view of the eardrum the patient can hear really really well but I just wanted to get as much out as possible so spoiler alert there is a bit of wax left behind please don't um hate me for that um i decided not to continue anymore because i didn't feel it was necessary and also i don't want to put the patient under they've come here to, to for me to help them hear better um, not for me to induce any um, discomfort and pain so i felt it was just the right time to stop when i did on the left side Just trying to go into the cartilage portion here, just to put a bit more pressure to kind of get it away. And again, you can see the benefit of that hollow center. The wax is going up it. A bit of a difficulty in this here was knowing how thick this layer of wax was as well. Um, especially on the bony part, you don't want to embed the jobs on the horn too much, just in case it's a very thin layer. And then you're, you're, you're literally grazing the canal ball, the bony part, the skin. You're going to damage it. You're going to cause micro abrasions. And you can potentially bruise and cut the ear. So it's just judging. And I can see a bit of the canal wall there just to the right. So it gives you, it allows me a more um, insight of how, how thick this layer is. So we're just in the cartridge portion again here. So I can just apply a bit more pressure. So in between each scoop, we're trying to just clear all this wax. We just put it in between the tissue and almost squeeze out all the wax and wipe it. So let's do we get a bit more out? Again, I'm just going reaching forwards. And as I'm bringing the, the job someone out, I'm also just curving the the end of the Jobson horn um, to resemble the curvature of the ear. And I mean, this is a good illustration with this Jobson horn here, the standard Jobson horn, it's got a flat edge. So, but you can see the ear, there's a little curve there because uh, it's round. And one of the things that, without saying too much, is that with um, the, the career I've developed, I've taken that into account. So I mentioned when I was doing the right ear, the, the, the correct that um, uh, we've developed would be quite suitable, especially for this ear, especially um, when, you've got, when you're trying to remove the wax directly off the ear canal uh, 
at the bottom of the ear in particular and at the top because that's where the curvature is most pronounced. But when you've got a flat edge Jobson horn like this, it's a bit more tricky because you don't want to uh, graze the edge against the side of the canal wall. So again, just reaching forwards. I wanted to avoid the metal one in this as I think this was just a bit more sensitive for the patient. Um, so I was just trying to persevere. It would probably been great if this was a bit longer because I think I'm just slightly struggling to reach the end of the wax there. It's a bit, it's more about two thirds the way in. So I've just inverted the Jotten horn and just working on the cartridge portion, just trying to remove this. See, it can be quite a tedious procedure. Um, um, with micro I would have probably put a bit of oil in there, and what the oil would have done is bind the wax together, loosen it a bit. So I managed to get a bit more of a deeper reach there. You can see that I've gone a bit deeper. I'm slowly gliding, I'm just hovering over it. I don't want to scratch the ear at all. But yeah, with micro I would probably just put a square of oil in there, coagulated all the wax and removed it. It would have been quite a quick procedure, I would have thought. But again, we don't want to introduce any noise where possible for this particular patient. So I'm nearly there now. And again, there is going to be some residual wax cut in the canal wall. I'm not concerned by that. Bit of wax are good for you. So wax is slightly acidic and the acidity helps to inhibit harmful bacterial and fungal growth. Um, it also helps to serve as a natural insect repellent. Earwax is greasy and oily, so it helps to moisturise, lubricate the skin that lines the ear canal, preventing it from drying and cracking and becoming itchy. And it's sticky, so it captures any foreign particles that may enter the ear. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care.